Hi everyone, welcome to Vocal Academy. See this problem. In how to find complex power observed by each element. Here one source and three passage elements are there. Means observed by three elements and separated by one source. Source is given as H with phase angle minus 20 degrees volts and uh, two branches are there which are parallel to each other. So in the first branch having impedance the resistor is 4 ohms and capacitor having impedance minus J3 ohms. In the second branch, inductor is there having impedance J5 ohms. Now how can you find the complex power observed by each element? It is very easy problem. So here two branches are there which are in parallel. So first of all we are going to find current in these two branches. So let us assume here current was entering cap line from the source. So at this node the current was printed as I1 current and I2 current. Now how can you find the current I1 and I2? So here these two branches are connected across a voltage source means in the parallel circuits we know that the voltage is same. So whatever the voltage across there that voltage is same across all the branches in the parallel. Means this much voltage is there in the first branch same voltage is there in the second branch. Now according to Ohm's law we know that V equal to IZ. So from this we get current I equal to V by Z. Now in the first branch so let us assume that there is impedance Z1 is there. In the second branch impedance is Z2. Now first of find the impedance of first branch that is Z1. So Z1 equal to two elements are there. One resistor and another capacitor. So both are in series. The impedance are 4 ohms and minus J3 ohms. So Z1 equal to 4 minus J3 ohms. Whenever impedances are connected in series, just add it. Next in the second branch only one element is there. That is the impedance that is Z2. So Z2 equal to J5 ohms. Now we are going to find I1 in branch 1. According to Ohm's law V by Z. So in this branch this is the voltage. So for this branch this is the impedance. Now substitute in the fusion we will get I1. So that is so V is H with phase angle minus 20 degrees volts upon and Z is this value 4 minus J3 ohms. So convert the denominator into phasor form like this. So for that so first of all find the magnitude. So keep the numerator as it is that is 8 with phase angle minus 20 degrees upon. So for this magnitude is root of 4 square plus minus 3 whole square. So nothing but root of 16 plus 9 that's equal to root 25 that's equal to 5 so 5 with phase angle tan inverse of b by a so this is b and this is a b is minus 3 and a is 4 so minus 3 by 4 so it becomes 8 by 5 and phase angle is minus 20 upon so for this by the calculator we will get minus 36.87 now how to solve it the decision between the two phasor forms so whenever two phasor forms are there are going to division that means let example so A with phase angle phi 1 and uh, B with phase angle phi 2 so it becomes a single phasor that is A by B with phasor angle phi 1 minus phi 2 this is the formula now apply here we will get so 8 by 5 nothing but 1.6 with phase angle minus 20 minus of minus 36.87 so minus become plus that is minus 20 plus 36.87 so it becomes 1.6 with phase angle 16.87 so this is the current I1 so I1 we got 
with phase angle 16.87. Now similarly we are going to find current I2. So I2 equal to according to Ohm's law that is I2 equal to V is source voltage. So according by substitute the formula that is 8 with phase angle minus 20 degrees upon so in this branch the impedance is J5. Now apply same procedure. So convert this complex form to phasor form. So keep numerator as it is. That is 8 with phase angle minus 20 degrees. So J5 means 0 plus J5. So yield part is 0. Now apply magnitude formula. That is 0 square plus 5 square. It becomes 5. So amplitude is 5. And phase angle is tan inverse of B by A. So tan inverse of B by A. So B is 5. A is 0 that is tan inverse of 5 by 0 nothing but anything by 0 means infinity that is tan inverse of infinity so it becomes 90 degrees now apply this formula we will get so 8 by 5 nothing but 1.6 and phase angle is minus 20 so 90 becomes minus 90 so it becomes 1.6 with phase angle minus 110 so this is current I2 so I2 we got 1.6 with phase angle 110 minus 110. In the next step find current I. We have I1 I2 is there. I means entering here and leaving I1 as I2. Means total current I equal to I1 plus I2. So it becomes I equal to I1 plus I2. Here I1 and I2 are in phasor forms. So between phasor forms, multiplication, division is very easy, but subtraction, addition and subtraction are very difficult. So for that, we need to convert into complex number form. So whenever the number is in the complex form, we can easily con use operators that is plus and minus. So convert this into complex form. So it will give it becomes minus 0 0.5472 minus j. 1.504 so I am using calculator here for getting the value it is small problems next plus I2 so by using calculator we will get this value it is 1.531 plus J 0 0.4643 remember this is a very important point so between phasors Multiplication and division is very easy. We can easily simplify it when compared with complex numbers. With complex numbers, we can easily operate plus and minus. Now it becomes finally of adding 0 0.9839 minus j 1.04. Now convert this into phasor form in this format. That is 1.432 amplitude with phase angle minus 46.58 degrees. So this is the total current I for the given problem in terms of phasor. Now how can you find the complex power? Now we can easily find the complex power because we know current I1 and I2 and source current. In the first step I am going to find complex power supplied by the source so that is by the source how much complex power is supplied complex power is represented with the symbol capital S that is S equal to V into I conjugate so V is given as this is now substitute here that is 8 with phase angle minus 20 degrees into and I conjugate total current conjugate so keep amplitude as it is and apply minus of for the phasor part it becomes 1.432 and phase angle here minus 46.5 is there minus is there so conjugate means minus of minus means plus so plus 46. 
5 edge now multiply the two phasor forms so this is one phasor form and this is another phasor form pass going to multiply so this is voltage and this is the current conjugate value now can you product the phasor forms just product the magnitudes that is 8 into this value it gives 11.456 next add the values when division subtraction so when product adding the phase values that is minus 20 plus 46.58 it becomes 11.456 with phase angle 26.58 so this is the complex power supplied by the source voltage for the given problem next complex power absorbed by resistor capacitor and inductor now i am going to calculate complex power absorbed by the capacitor first after source so now here capacitor so for capacitor the formula is the complex power equal to magnitude of the current in the capacitor is what that is i1 current so take the i1 value magnitude whole square into the impedance of capacitance that is zc it becomes so magnitude of here magnitude is 1.6 is there so 1.6 whole square and zc is impedance of capacitor that is minus j3 so it becomes minus 7.68 j volt ampere this is the complex power of capacitor next for resistor same procedure and same formula so complex power s equal to so magnitude of the current in the resistor is i1 its magnitude square into resistor impedance that is zr so it becomes so i1 magnitude is 1.6 so 1.6 whole square and zr is impedance of resistance that is 4 so it becomes 10.24 volt ampere this is the complex power for resistor now final inductor is there so same procedure for inductor so inductor complex power s equal to the current in the inductor is i2 current so i2 current magnitude that is 1.6 so 1.6 whole square into the inductor impedance that is j5 so by simplifying this we will get 12.8 j units is volt ampere this is yes for inductor so this is complex power in capacitor and this is complex power in resistor and this is complex power in inductor so for the given circuit these are the complex powers absorbed by the corresponding elements of capacitor resistor and inductor and this is the process of simplification for getting the complex powers absorbed by each element whenever the circuit is given like this and, this is the, and thanks for watching please subscribe like share thanks